It's easy as you make it. Uh, Vanessa and Alan are here. Good morning to good both morning. of you. Uh, we're going to discuss this morning's headlines, aren't we? We are, absolutely. Don't forget, you can get involved too. You can get involved in the conversation. Send us a message on WhatsApp by scanning the QR code that's on your screen now. Or you can get in touch using X, Facebook or our This Morning app. You must be 18 or older. Uh, Alan, let's start with the smoking ban, mm -hmm. of course, because uh, the vote happened... Uh, there's a plan to ban anybody born after 2009 from buying cigarettes, and Mr Sunak got it through. Got it through, despite some of his own MPs. I mean, there was nearly 50% of Conservative MPs either abstained or, or voted against. Almost 50%. Yeah. Uh, 163 mm -hmm. either abstained or voted against. But it was the right thing to do. And it's the timing that's important. I was self-secretary when we introduced mm. the smoking ban in clubs and pubs and all of that. Yeah. And we were, that time, though, right? we were expecting... a time, though, right? We are expecting a tougher ride than we had, but the point is, the public supported it because it was the right timing. They'd been educated over the years to see the harm that yes. tobacco was doing. They wanted the government to do something uh, in public health, and so it worked. And I think this will work as well. I think this is this is the right timing. Uh, Vanessa, as as uh, Alan was saying, there was some resistance from some prominent Tory MPs, Absolutely. Liz Truss has said, it is emblemic of the technocratic establishment in this country that wants to limit people's freedom and another example of our country's health police. Well, it's a very difficult one, this one, because to say I'm not going to vote in favour of banning something that makes people desperately ill, mm. causes the NHS a whole lot of problems and costs us all a lot of money, is, yeah. you know, can damage unborn babies in the womb. I mean, it's very serious. So to vote against banning it is a big deal. On the other hand, what people think that they're voting against is the banning of adults in this country making free choices. Right. So, you know, if you want to have a bar of chocolate, you should probably choose a stick of celery. But if you're over a certain age and it's your money and you came by it honestly and you decide to have three bars of chocolate, it's up to you. Do you want the government giving you a weekly sugar ration? and saying, you know, you can have half a flake mm. every fortnight, that's all, because of your teeth and your health. Of course you don't. Same with alcohol. Do you want the government saying you can have this tiny cherry brandy once a fortnight and no more when you're a grown-up? You don't. So it's all about personal liberty as an adult. And part of our liberty has been choosing to smoke. But it's so complicated because, of course, as soon as you become addicted, there's no choice involved at all. Yeah. No. So the idea that yeah. voting against a smoking ban is voting for liberty and the right to choose to be whatever you want to be as an adult, you know, a drunk, a degenerate, fat, toothless... There's no need you know, to be personal about <laughs> it. <so. laughs> it's up to you. So it's a very difficult one, but I would find it very hard to vote against a smoking there's ban. There's also yeah. technical yeah. issues here because it is true that there'll come a time when a 25-year-old lighting up a fag can do it legally and a 24-year-old won't be able mm, to do it legally. Yeah, one all, day difference How do you in enforce that? Yeah. And we thought that New Zealand was going to be in the vanguard of this because they'd suggested they the policy really, yeah. and then they withdrawn it. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's England now that's in the lead on this with no other countries that we can use to see how... How it, how it works rests down And we do have a time on a tradition of your older brother buying you a packet of fags, don't we? I mean, you don't have to be a certain age well, yeah, to get older. It's changed, though, now, hasn't it? That, don't you feel like kids now aren't smoking as much as they used to? It's a minority right? pursuit now, yeah. which yeah. is why, you know, if you tried this 20, 30 years ago, I mean, I remember, you know, when you got on the tube in London, mm. there were only two carriages for non-smokers. Yeah. yeah. One near the front and one near the and back. On everyone else yeah. on, on, on an aeroplane. Yeah. Oh, no, there were smoking seats on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. And also yeah. everyone's dad and quite a lot of people's mums used to light up in the car yeah. Yeah. with all the windows yeah. closed and the kids in the back of the car. No one, no one you know, seemed to bat no. an eyelid at it. Not yeah. at all. But now my That's kids changed. say um, that when they see people smoking, they feel as if they didn't get the memo. So it doesn't look cool. Yeah. It yeah. looks yeah. like they just didn't realise it was going to really hurt them. So they I mean, vaping is the it. next thing, isn't it? That yeah. we still don't know long term mm. what the impact of vaping is. But as you were saying, it's, it's younger generation aren't necessarily smoking, but they are picking up vaping, which yeah. is so much more accessible and easy to get their hands on. Mm. And whether at somewhere down the line, that's going to have an impact because we just don't have the studies, Alan, because it's such a sort of more... Well, a, well, a, but what we do issue. know, I mean, this is called the smoking and vaping bill. I'm not sure what they're going to do on vaping, yeah. but oh, we do know that vaping's helped a lot of people to stop smoking. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And for all the reasons Vanessa said, you know, we know now that the result of smoking, there's no question about it. The science is very clear. Well, it kills 80,000 killer. people a year. Yeah. Costs the NHS and the economy an estimated £17 billion mm. annually. But we also know that they're allowed to target vapes at very young people, so they've got sweet little flavours, peach blossom, yes. chewing gum, uh, bubble yeah. gum, yeah. pretty colours, you know, they look attractive in the way that they haven't been allowed to advertise cigarettes for years mm -hmm. and years yeah. now. Decades they haven't been able to do mm -hmm. that.
So, you know, next step. Yeah. Um, talking of children, actually, uh, we're talking today about smacking children must be fully outlawed in England and in Northern Ireland. Uh, paediatricians are saying it has a massive effect on children. Well, the NSPCC has been saying this for years and years. Mm. The NSPCC has been saying it would like to see all smacking banned. At the moment, in England, you're allowed to smack your children whenever you like as long as you don't leave a mark. So you're not allowed to hit them hard enough to leave a bruise, but you are allowed to smack. Um, and the NSPCC has for years been saying this is not a good thing because it sets up a cycle of violence. Yes. You know, if you're saying, do not hit your sister, boom. Yeah. What, what is the message that you're, that yes. you're saying? And also, if you say, do not you know, take those chocolates, bam, you're saying, this is how I punish you, this is violence, I'm your parent, it's acceptable. So you're, you're sending a message that paediatricians are now saying is unacceptable, that children who've been smacked will mm -hmm. go on to smack and will be, you know, in, in various different ways, troubled as adults. To me, that makes perfect sense. Yes. It's been outlawed in Wales since oh, March 2022, mm -hmm. Scotland since November 2020, Alan. So we'd just be following, or England and Northern Ireland would just be We're following. Yeah, in, in England, the 2004 legislation had this get out clause of reasonable punishment. Mm. That's the two words that are used. So is that a the reasonable mark? punishment? Yeah. Right. It's difficult to draw the line. Yeah. I mean, we talk about smacking. That's the nice euphemism. I mean, you're actually striking a child. Yeah. You're violent to a child. Smacking, I mean, some of this is absolutely, you know, uh, it's, it's violence in every sense of the word. So I think it's inevitable. Um, but you do have an issue here with parental responsibility, that parents feel uh, very miffed that the state is interfering in the way they bring up their they child. They really do, and very often, you know, I've done so many phone-ins on this subject mm. over years and years, and parents phone in absolutely indignant. They really do. It's my child, my right to discipline my child, and they always cite the same examples. What if your child's about to run in the road? What if your child's about to stick its hand in a fire? Um, and, 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 and they also always say the same thing, which is, my parents used to beat me or hit me or whatever yeah. it is, and I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, proves yeah. the cycle does just yeah. continue. Quite. Well, yeah. I suppose it feels normal to you if that's what your parents used to do and your child's misbehaving. It's well, they used to normal. do terrible thing. Every teacher was licensed to beat you. I mean, in my primary school, yeah. the girls got hit on the leg with a ruler and the boys got caned. This is yeah, a primary yeah, school. This is seven-year-olds yeah. got caned across, across the hand. The yeah. hand. Yeah. Except one particular teacher used to cane you across the wrist, which oh. really hurt. Yeah. And I was quite a good kid, but I got yeah. caned. Yeah, my dad you said they used to put blotting paper in there down their trousers to try Just to, to try ease, ease the, the blow. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it really, really hurt. Oh. Uh, this report warns that children that experience physical punishment are nearly three times as likely to develop poorer mental health and more than twice as likely to experience serious physical assault and abuse. I mean, when the report points to the, the impact that it has being that clear, it sort yeah. of seems like it should... And you can't time. assault an adult in the same way that you're allowed legally to assault a child. Yeah. That's... That's the kind of argument that the paediatrician... Uh, let's yeah. talk about this High Court ruling that came about yesterday, Vanessa. The Michaela Community School was uh, taken to the High Court over a group of Muslim pupils who wanted the right to be able to pray mm. uh, at the school. It's a non-denominational school. They had rules about the fact that they didn't want to have any sort of secular teaching, no uh, prayer at all. These children wanted to be able to pray at the school. They took the school to the High Court. The High Court judge has come down in line with the school. Yes, and, and this is the most extraordinary school, mm. a high attaining, unbelievably disciplined, really high achieving school that is desperately prized by parents who are absolutely you know, aching, yearning to get their children into that school. And the headmistress is called Catherine Burble Singh, and she's mm -hmm. a, a visionary of sorts. You know, she's an unusual person. She has very, very firm thoughts about her particular school and how it should go. And she doesn't want kind of, I would put it this way, splinter groups of pupils mm -hmm. suddenly deciding to pray as they were doing in the playground, and some of them making other children feel that they should be joining in, and why were they not? And just kind of separatism at school. You're a yes. school, you're cohesive, you're a unit. That's why you wear a uniform. Exactly, pray in, yeah. in assembly or pray at home or pray at the weekends or when you get home, but don't be splintering off to pray at school. And, and the High Court have upheld uh, the case. And the, one of the things that people are very upset about is, is, is public money being used yeah. to fight the school. And it might have cost, I think they're thinking, is it £150,000 mm. of a uh, Alan, they, uh, what she has said, this head teacher, who is, uh, we've interviewed many times and yeah. she's sort of held up as a sort of a, a, sort of a beacon, a, a beacon yeah. in mm. terms of school mm. discipline. If parents don't like what Michaela is, they don't need to send their children to us. These, no. are, these are parents and children that went to the school knowing that they had these rules surrounding prayer. I'm a big admirer of Burbal Singh. Uh, you know, there is no legal requirement to have a religious uh, ceremony at school. There's no legal requirement to, to designate a place for worship in a school. Never has been. 
So this school is a secular school. You know what you're getting when you put your children yeah. into that school. And I'm absolutely delighted that she's that the court has upheld that. They've got 21 days to appeal, so they may appeal the court decision. But so far, they've uh, the High Court judge has gone with the Michaela Community School, which is good news for the head teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the time being, guys. Don't go anywhere. Vanessa and Alan are staying with us. We've got more top stories to discuss after the break, including new music from Lennon and McCartney. They're back together. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. And Annabelle Croft's taking us on a tour of stunning Yorkshire in her very own camper van. Annabelle. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>